Hello, my lovely students. Welcome to Joy Learning Revision Show for JHS Final Year students. I hope you are all doing well in your various homes. Today, our topic for discussion is entrepreneurship. Before then, I hope you already know my name. Last week, I told you about my name. My name is Anita Otri Asari. I hope you are all ready with your pens and notepads, getting ready to put down a few notes to refer later in the day. Now, before we start, um, the phone lines will be opened. Now, you can also follow us on Joy Learning on Facebook or Twitter, Joy Learning TV, and on Instagram at Joy underscore Learning TV. I hope you are all there, ready to learn. Now let's move on for the day. Our topic, as I said earlier on, is entrepreneurship. Before we start the lesson, we need some objectives. The objectives is going to guide you, the learner, to be able to achieve your aim. Now let's go through the objectives. By the end of the lesson, the learner will be able to 1. Explain the following terms. Entrepreneur. Enterprise. State-owned enterprise. Private enterprise. 2. Give reasons why the state owns some businesses. And again, suggest the role that the state should play in monitoring private sector businesses. And then, also, suggest the role private businesses should play to ensure continuous survival. Now, let's go to entrepreneur. Who is an entrepreneur? An entrepreneur is someone who creates his or her own business and combines the three factors of production, that is, land, capital, labor, to produce goods and services at lower cost. For example, when we talk about the three factors of production, we are talking about before you go into a business, let's say, for instance, you are a school-going uh, student, so you are not supposed to sell. But sometimes, as you grow up one day, you would like to take a venture into um, a business. Before you start the business, you must get a land. That's a site where you put your structure. And then the capital, you need a little fun to support what you want to do. And then labor, which is the people that will support you to do the work to have a, a massive production. So these are the three factors of what? Production. So we always say that some examples of people who are into entrepreneur are beauticians and tailors, farmers, school proprietors, that is those who own the private schools. They are able to establish the school for you to attend. And then those who also have the shopping mall, they are also entrepreneurs. Now, after this, let's look at who an, uh, what an enterprise is. The entrepreneur, as we have already explained. Now, before that person gets a business, he, he has to get an enterprise. So let's look at what an enterprise is. An enterprise is a business unit that is set up by an individual or by the state to render services or produce goods for consumers. And some of, the, uh, some of these goods can be milk, can be milo, can be bar of soap, can be sugar, and other things. Now, some examples of these enterprises in Ghana are as follows, as you can see on the screen. The first one is the sole proprietorship. The second one is partnership. And the third one is cooperatives. And the last one is joint stock companies. Now, 
Let's look at the definition or what it means by state-owned enterprise or the state, the government owning an enterprise. A state-owned enterprise is a business organization that is set, owned and managed by the state to produce or to provide essential goods and services. It is established to provide utilities and other services. Examples of some state-owned enterprises are Ghana Water Company, Electricity Company of Ghana, Ghana Cocoa Marketing Board, and others. I'm sure you can mention a lot at home. We also have the Ghana Commercial Bank Limited and the National Investment Bank. All these are for the state. Now, I hope you are jotting down some of the salient points. Let's move on to reasons why the state owns some businesses. It is very important for the state to own some businesses. So we are looking at why it is important or reasons why it is important for the state to own some businesses. There is a need for the government to establish and control businesses that are vital or important for the people of Ghana. So for example, it is very important for the state to provide certain utilities for you at home, at school, and then even in your parents' offices and also in the marketplaces. One, creation of employment. The reason is that they are able to create employment avenues for people. If the state owns certain businesses or enterprises, people will be able to get jobs such as drivers and staff in various organizations. It also prevents exploitation of customers. Thirdly, provision of infrastructure and raising revenue for the government, provision of vital and strategic services. Now, we are going to define the following terms that we just said. Creation of employment avenues. State-owned enterprises are established to create job opportunity or employment to the general public. For example, the Ministry of Health, where we have doctors, nurses, anesthetics, ophthalmologists, and others. Then we come to the Ministry of Education. So you see, as I stand here, I'm giving to you or I'm informing you about a topic in social studies. Now, Ministry of Education also employs teachers, facilitators, resource personnel, and others. Volta River Authority is also one of a, a place where creation of job avenues is done for other people in the country. Ghana Broadcasting Corporation, that is GBC. Graphic Communication Group, all these group, all these above employ people as drivers and staff. The next point, to prevent exploitation of consumers. As you already know, if the state does not provide these things for us, some people will take an advantage of it and exploit people. When we say exploit, it's like draining them of their monies, taking things from them without nobody talking about it. So it is important that this government creates his or, his or her business. Most state-owned enterprises are set up to prevent or protect consumers against exploitation. Companies for vital services such as electricity that we use in your homes, and as I'm also using here, it's very important for each and everyone here to use it. And water cannot be left out to the private businessmen. This is because when water is left for the private businessmen, I hope you know what is going to happen. When people sell things on their own that belongs to the state, what happens? They sell it at very exorbitant prices, very high prices. A bucket of water, instead of it uh, being paid for you to pay uh, maybe a less amount, it will be sold to you at a very high rate, which is not right. So that's why the government sells or gives these utilities 
to us. If this is done, it will prevent the private businessmen from cheating the consumers. Again, the state-owned enterprise is expected to offer rates at reasonable prices to meet the income level of every average Ghanaian. So sometimes you see this metro bus, buses picking students from one place to another without even taking money from them. I'm very sure you have joined one before and you didn't pay anything. But if you join the private business transport, monies will be collected from you. Now let's look at the electricity company of Ghana. The prices are so low that each and everyone is able to afford. The same applies to the Water Company Limited. It also supports consumers with reasonable fares or bills. Now, provision of infrastructure. Provision of infrastructure by the state-owned enterprises provides social amenities for Ghanaians to enjoy the taxpayers' money. Since these monies are used to build infrastructure, for the country. Now, those children that go to school in the public schools, they are enjoying from the taxpayers' money. The schools have been built with the taxpayers' money. So they enjoy everything from the government. Regional hospitals, Children's Park, Babayara Sports Stadium, and the Ohinijan Sports Stadium, and other stadiums in Ghana are all part of creation of all parts of creation of infrastructure. Now let's look at raising revenue for the government. How does the government raise revenue? State-owned enterprises are set up to raise re revenue for the government in various ways. It is very important to raise revenue for the government through the collection of tolls, and tickets. Now, when you go to certain lorry parks, you see men at the entrance of the lorry parks collecting tickets before the vehicles will go out. Sometimes, too, when you are traveling on a highway, see they've built tow boats. There, you can see that monies are collected from the drivers, and all these monies are used to develop the nation. Examples of the state owned enterprises is that it helps to raise revenue for the government. These revenues are collected through these organizations. The first is the Ghana Revenue Authority, the Ghana Tourist Authority, the State Transport Corporation, that is STC, Metro Transit, Metropolitan Assemblies, all generate revenue through collection of tickets from traders in the market as a form of revenue. I hope you are following us with this cast. Try and jot down one or two salient points. Now let's move on again. Provision of vital or strategic services. The government owns it a duty to provide certain businesses such as the Ghana Water Company Limited, which is solely responsible for potable water supply to all urban and rural areas. And Electricity Company of Ghana also provides electricity to the citizens across the country. I'm very sure now you are enjoying the electricity. That's why you are watching me live from your homes. Again, this is so because water is one of the important or necessary commodities of life. Without water, I don't, I don't think you can leave. Water is very good. It cleanses the system. Now, let's look at water. Because water, without water, we cannot live. Another important service is the supply of electricity, which helps us to use it for our domestic, or, uh, domestic activities and industrial use to improve our daily life, daily, day to day life activities hello i'm very sure you are following as i go along 
put down the points as from where we started till now. Now let's move on. We are looking at problems of the state-owned enterprise. Problems of the state-owned enterprise. The state owns an enterprise, as we earlier said, but it also has its problems or challenges. Now, the first one is political or government interference. Now, government's involvement in some of the state-owned enterprises may lead to collapse. Why do we say this? We say this because some political parties may appoint party supporters or sympathizers who have very little knowledge and skills of the operation of the state-owned enterprise. For example, if I'm the president and then I have a, a sister and my sister is not very good in a particular area and I give the job to her, she will not be able to, um, to run the organization smoothly. So this is what happens sometimes. They also make decisions that undermine the smooth running of affairs, hence the collapse of the state's own enterprise. Now, the next point is nepotism. Nepotism. I love that word so much. I'm sure you understand what it means. Nepotism. Okay. Management of the state's own enterprise employ their favorites, such as family members, friends into the organization whether they have the requisite certificates or not so for example as you are about to write your examination the BEC after writing it and because maybe your mother is a headmistress in a school and then maybe you did not uh, uh, you didn't get the required um, certificate to work as, as maybe an administrator in the secondary school. But because your mother is there, your mother gives you that opportunity. You will see that you will fumble when you get there. But if you have the certificate, requisite certificate, you will do exploits. Now, due to this, these people are not able to take up their tax. They are not able to take up their tax. Now, let's look at the negative work ethics of workers. The negative work ethics, you know work ethics, things that people are supposed to do right in the workplaces. Most public servant workers regard state-owned enterprises as government work and not theirs. They result to negative attitudes to work. Some of them end up going to work very late. I'm sure you have been seeing some in your schools. Some teachers do not go to school very early. Hence, you wait in the classroom waiting for them. It's not a good behavior. Absent themselves from work. Pilfering. Some even also work lotto in the workplaces while they are supposed to work. And all these things are not good. Some also undermine or sabotage the efforts of other hard-working colleagues by giving them names, a jumera, and others which doesn't augur well. Now, we have ended with the private, uh, with the state-owned enterprises. Now we are moving on to private enterprise. Private enterprise. What is a private enterprise? A private enterprise is a business entity that is set up and owned by a private individual to provide goods and services in the aim of making profits or maximizing profits examples of this private enterprises are or is joy prime as you watch me on it right now or multimedia pharmaceutical companies like coffee comb pharmacy manufacturing industries as including industries mtn ghana hotels and restaurants Malcolm Group of Companies, Barclays Bank, and Statesman Newspaper. All these are private enterprises. Now let's look at some of the problems of the private enterprises. They also have problems. They have challenges. Now, the first one is inadequate capital. 
I want to highlight something here. As BEC candidates, in terms of social studies, when you're answering questions, never use lack, lack, but rather use inadequate because lack means there is none at all. But if you use inadequate, it means that there is a little and so you can add up to it. So you use the first point is inadequate capital. And let's see what that means. The main problem of facing most private enterprises in Ghana is the inadequacy of capital to expand their businesses. Remember, we talked about the factors of production and we mentioned capital, which is money. So some of the private businessmen do not have enough funds to start their business or even to continue it. Most of them stay, stay for a very long time before they are able to start again. So these are some of the problems that they have. Inadequate credit facilities. Some private enterprises in Ghana do not have access to bank loans and credit facilities because they do not have personal assets or properties like buildings to serve as a loan security from the banks in which they want to go to. So for example, I want to establish a business and the business I want to establish is building of estate houses. Now I need money, capital to start it. If I start and I'm, I don't have any building or any office as a collateral to give to the bankers, then that means that I can't be able to continue with my business. So inadequate credit facilities. Or if I go to the bank and I don't have anything to mortgage or to give out as a collateral, then that means that my business will not go on. I hope you are understanding all that you are discussing as we move on. Now let's look at the roles that the state should play in promoting private businesses. Now, even though as private entrepreneurs, the government should support because the private man is, has not got enough money. He's also trying to make the business to maximize profits for his daily activities and also to look after the family. It is important for the state to help private businessmen in Ghana to succeed. This can be done when it creates a conducive environment for its businessmen. Below are some of the various roles that the states can help to promote businesses in Ghana. So we are looking at the roles that the state can help to promote businesses for the private person. Advertising of products. Advertising of products. Products manufactured by private enterprises of all businessmen could be promoted by the government by advertising and promoting them internationally. You know, there are international trade fairs. We have the local trade fair where the private man sends most of his items to such places for people to come and look at, buy and send them to to their homes this makes the private man also promotes his or her business now if the government is able to promote the private man's products internationally what happens then the private man will be able to continue with his business but if the government is not able to do that then the private man stays I remember there were a lot of magazines some time ago that were international from Ghana. People were reading it worldwide and it gave the private man that opportunity to sell his or her products. There are other products like um, Amin soap from Amin Sangari, dark soap and others that have been promoted internationally for people to buy. The state can also promote the private enterprises through the print media such as the international magazines and businesses to introduce the Ghanaian product globally to let the local and foreign buyers and sellers to patronize them. Now when you go to certain West African countries you see some products that are from Ghana 
on the shelves in some supermarkets. Sometimes, when you also come, go to certain supermarkets in, in Ghana, in your locality, you can see some products that are from other countries. So when the government does this for the private businessman, it promotes his businesses to flourish. Now, the next point is trade missions and sponsorship. It is important for the state to sponsor private, hard-working and profit-making businessmen to participate in international trade fairs. Do you know somebody who has participated in international trade fair from your locality or in Ghana? I'm very sure you know a lot of them and you'll be jotting down their names. Conferences, exhibition shows, all these are, are when the opportunity is given to the private ent ent entrepreneur, he will be able to exhibit his products for more people to buy. This will give the international exposure to showcase their products. That means that when the private ent entrepreneur sends his products outside Ghana, Togo, Nigeria, UK, America, it exposes the products and people will also buy it. Made in Ghana products must be showcased internationally. Now let's move on to the next point. Training programs for private businesses. The government should organize training programs, courses, and new methods of production to refresh private businessmen's knowledge to equip them with current techniques and skills. This will help the private sector to improve on their capabilities and run their businesses effectively. I hope you understand this. This simply means that training programs, if the private businessman goes through seminars, maybe for example, someone wants to prepare soap, the private businessman should be taken through the preparation of soap, how to add certain things to it to make the soap smell good. I'm sure the soap you use at home in Baffin is made in Ghana. And then when you use it, you see that the fragrance is so nice. These are refresher courses that should be given to private businessmen so that they can boost up their products. Now, advertisement of products of private enterprises in overseas countries. The state or the government should take up the duty of advertisement in the international media for the private sector businesses so as to attract partnership or partners and support from the international community. The state can buy advertisements, slots on international television networks such as Deutsche Welle, CNN, GBC and other networks to give it the needed international exposure to Ghanaian private businessmen. Patronize made in good goods, Ghana goods, or goods from Ghana. When the government makes it a law for Ghanaians to patronize locally made products, everybody will patronize it and then it will encourage the private business person to also produ produce a lot of items. Now, let's look at some of the examples. Ghanaian Ghanaian prints on Friday. Now, you realize that for some time, we're told, or it was announced that on every Friday, every Ghanaian should wear a Ghanaian fabric, a dress made of Ghanaian fabric. So you see of late, a lot of people use different designs with the Ghanaian cloth to make nice dresses to wear. And I think when we do that, we promote the private enterprises. And also cooking of local foods. We should also use our bran rice in cooking in every home. I'm sure you have been eating most of some of the bran rice. I just ate some this morning. It was very nice. So keep eating locally made bran rice grown in Ghana. When this is done, there will be a large market 
for patronizing these goods, which will lead to the revenue for the country. Social studies, as you know, has a lot of topics, subtopics under a topic. So we are moving on again to the role the private business should play in ensuring con continuous survival or support. Why do we say this? The private man needs support. Without the support, as I said, from the government, the private man cannot survive. So the role the private businessman should play to ensure his survival or support. One, roles private businesses should play to ensure continuous survival is to ensure survival is to ensure that they produce quality goods. Quality goods. When I say quality goods, and I'm talking about goods that when you see it on the shelves in the supermarkets, you'll be attracted to buy it. That means that the branding, the finishing, and everything looks so attractive. So you buy it into your various homes. Two, paying of taxes and keeping of proper records. As a private business entrepreneur, you need to pay your taxes. If you don't pay the taxes and you don't have proper records, records that means that you just be doing anything and at the end of the day, you wouldn't know how much you have spent or how much you have en en engaged in the business that you are doing. The next one is contribution of social programs. Now, there are some businessmen who do very well in their localities. Every now and then, they try to give out some of their products to the local communities in which they have their factories. So it is important that you contribute to social programs. I know uh, Promacidor Ghana um, and um, Indomie, they go to various schools, they cook Indomie, and then they give to students. Milo, they also go to sc some schools and provide them with hot drink. I'm sure you remember the hot drink you drank some time ago. These are all contributions of the private enterprises to social programs. Now, sales or sale of reasonable prices. The private businessman or the entrepreneur should not sell prices so high that people cannot um, buy or afford. When they do that, they will not help themselves. Now, private sectors in Ghana should hold the key to their own success because if they do the things right, they will be able to flourish. This can be done through decisions and law, law binding the private sectors. The role that must be played by the sector to remain, make the business in active, active to help the business, the private enterprise flourish. Now let's look at the role that they must play by the private sector to remain in business. Produce quality goods. Produce quality goods. I think we have talked about this already, but we'll highlight on it again. The private sector should ensure that the production of quality goods or services it provides to the public should be of high quality. This will enable the consumers to patronize the products on the market. I'm sure when you want to buy a pen and you go to the market and the pen we write with it and it doesn't write, you wouldn't like to go in for it again. So they should produce quality goods.
Okay. Okay, so the next point is paying of tax and keeping proper records. I hope I discussed that already with you. That if you don't keep the proper records, you will not be able to get your transactions right. You didn't know whether you are making profits or you are losing. Contribution of social programs, I also talked about that. And then I also talked about some companies donating their products to, or sponsorship to some of the communities. Example is Pomacido Ghana Cowbell. Our milk, you enjoy it at home, which also donates stationery to schools in Ghana. Unilever Ghana Foundation also renovates hygiene stations in some public schools and selected schools in Ghana. 